So I all know that all of you know that Stanford is just an incredible place. And you may know that Stanford is now the place that is preferred by parents as well as by students. The number one choice for parents and students in where to go is Stanford. That's the type of growth we see. Now, as was told to you, there may be 10 things that you do not know about undergraduate education at Stanford. And I'm going to share them with you now. And much like you would see on David Letterman or ESPN, we're going to do them in reverse roll call. So here we go. Number 10. About 1,000 students take music lessons or perform in a choral group such as the orchestra at Stanford every year. And as the president spoke about earlier, this speaks to the traction that the arts are getting at Stanford right now. In addition to that, another 1,000 prospective students each year do a musical audition as part of a supplement for their Stanford application. And this year, we had an incredible one on the ukulele. I don't know if the kid got into Stanford, but the audition was really, really good. Now, also at Stanford, we have a new creative expression requirement. And these are part of what are our new breath requirements. And under this new creative expression requirement, what happens is that every student must take a course in arts practice, art making, or design. So that's a course in creative writing, in theater, in music, or in architecture and design. So this is part of this new series, as I said, of new, uh, what we call the ways of thinking, ways of doing, which are the new breath requirements at Stanford. And if you did the acronym, it would be WhatWAD, and that's bad. So in, <laughs> instead of that, they're called the ways. So these are things that students have to do. There's something that students are doing, number nine, that they really want to do. 90% of our students are taking CS106A. Intro to Computer Programming. This is students in the humanities, in the social sciences, and in the natural sciences. And when I ask students in the humanities why are they taking this course, what they say is they love the idea of being able to make a program, to do coding, and to take ownership of something they created in terms of this. So across the board, that's true. It is also true that right now, computer science is the number one major at Stanford. So one of the things that often happens in terms of engineers, et cetera, is that they're unable to get involved in overseas studies. And one of the things we've done about that is number eight. We've created eight overseas seminars. What the seminars are, are a time for faculty to come together with 12 students to go to a place and to do a course that's context specific in a place outside of those that we have campuses. So last year, or this summer rather, we had programs go to Austria, to Wales, to Palau, to Madagascar, among uh, places. What, what do you guess was the most popular among students of those? Palau, I hear. Any Madagascar? Believe it or not, it was Austria. But on average, everyone was three to one in terms of choices going. We do have 11 overseas campuses, the newest one being the campus in South Africa that focuses on service learning. And last year, some 857 students went overseas. So that's about 50% of our students were going to build that number to, into the 60s. Now, certainly students are going overseas. But one thing they're also doing, number seven, is eating. We serve 12,000 meals a day in the dining hall. And if you take the meals outside of the dining hall where students meet, it goes up to 18,000. And this is meals including gluten-free, peanut-free, uh, vegetarian, vegan meals, also uh, performance meals for our sports, and very, very much interested in a sustainability. So therefore, on campus, some 25,000 pounds of wild Alaskan salmon are shipped in every year from a small family fishery in Alaska. So students are eating, but they're also going to football games. And uh, the red zone has more students than ever before. If you see, our stadium is packed. 33,000 season tickets sold out before the season started. Then you add the red zone to that. And you can imagine the fever that's arising with the Oregon game next week. So outside, we found out from, uh, from businesses outside that some 278 cans of red paint were sold. So if you see your son and daughter in red, you know why. Or Stanford decals on the faces, some 2,000 at the Stampus bookstore. And then there's the tree. This year's tree is an interesting, as you know, each tree is different and each tree makes itself. This year's tree, it's a, a wire metal form that it wears like a backpack. 
and some of the, the accoutrements, the fly, uh, flowers that are on the tree, excuse me, the petals on the tree are material that has shamrocks on it or Star Wars. Now the tree is something that's been featured in the past on those ESPN ads, you know, that this is ESPN. Well, the tree is going to be featured on one this fall, featuring a Stanford athlete or former Stanford athlete of some renown, but I won't say who. Just stay tuned. Number five, as the president spoke about, some 38,824 students applied to Stanford, and our acceptance rate was 5.7% last year. Right? The most difficult school to get into in terms of that in the country. But among the students that we did accept to the news class is incredible diversity. It's socioeconomically diverse. It is diverse in terms of geographic region and in terms of racial diversity. We're like no place else in the country. We don't match our peers. We haven't had a white majority in some time at Stanford. We also have 14% first generation students at Stanford. Some 10% of the students are international students and another 10% are student athletes. And as the president spoke about earlier, you know the graduation rate of our student athletes and our student athletes, I'm amazed at them that the kind of work they do in the classroom as well as others outside of the classroom, the busyness that they have to do to be a Stanford student athlete is amazing. And in terms of busyness, Stanford students are incredibly busy in terms of what they do. Their schedules are so full. And so we created a new course, number four, a new course that some 40 students are taking this quarter by the D School called Designing Your Stanford. And what it does for sophomores, it looks at the next three years of their life at Stanford and what they're doing in terms of their career. And we want them to move from a place where they're just taking courses to making Stanford their own. We want them to move from a place where they're seeing what they can get into Stanford, all the activities they can do, rather than what they can get out of Stanford is what we want to see. Because what we see is today's students different from before or even 10 years ago. 10 years ago, students were graduating with about 180 credit units. Now they're graduating with over 190. So they're taking more courses. And that's something we want to look at. Also, we see that there's some 600 students clubs at students. So as I said, students are incredibly busy. We have a new requirement for freshmen that we started in a way to open up the freshman year that before the freshman year was too packed. And this new requirement is called Thinking Matters. And Thinking Matters are courses that look at an idea, a problem, a question of human import, past or present, from a disciplinary perspective that shows why and how Thinking Matters in relationship to this. Now, we were going to call these Thinking Matters courses Big Ideas courses. Then we found out Berkeley had a Big Ideas courses. Then it became bigger idea courses. <laughs> the biggest idea. Um, one of the most popular Thinking Matters courses in the fall is a course on the science of Mythbusters, and that's a picture from it, that TV show. If you've seen Mythbusters, Len Ora, he mentioned that he's teaching us Thinking Matters course. We have them from over the, all over the university, one from the med school, the cancer course. Then a popular philosophy course in the spring is evil. A parent asked me what the final project was in evil, and I, I didn't know. <laughs> Now, while they're taking all these courses, one thing that potentially hasn't changed is that students report they're sleeping at night at an average of two hours. <laughs> and that work in terms of being done, the average time that work is done has been 12 at night and 4 AM. And now having a daughter who's a sophomore there, I know that to be true. She's fallen into those habits. But given the work, given the lack of sleep, what remains true is number one is that Stanford students are happy. And we have statistical proof now amongst our peers that Stanford students are happier than students anywhere else. So if you were happy then, they are happy now. Thank you.